So, the classic French baguette. The long, slender bread loaf that everybody sort of recognises. Uh, traditionally, nice golden colour, crispy or crunchy exterior. And it is the classic French loaf. Now, I'll tell you a little bit more about the, the origin of it, even though it's not really that well known, you know, for sure, but we'll come to that. But what I've got in here that I'm just mixing together at the moment is 350 grams of strong white bread flour, half a teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of active, you know, dried active yeast. And then 260 mils, or grams, if you want to weigh it, of cold water. Now, this takes a lot of rising time, if you like. So, having mixed it together, we're now just going to give the chance for the yeast to get working. And we're going to do this over four stages. Okay, so this is the first stage. We're going to now just let this rest for 45 minutes. Cover it over some clean film, rest for 45 minutes, and then we'll come back and we'll get ready for the second stage. So that's at 45 minutes. So all I'm doing now is I'm just removing the dough and I'm just gonna do some folds. Now, I'm not using extra flour. Instead, I've made sure my hands are wet and I'm gonna give them another little wet. And we're just gonna sort of do this about five or six times. And then it's going to be covered over and left for another 45 minutes. And that will be the second resting stage. I've turned it, what, three, this will be the fourth um, rest period it will have in a minute. Okay, it does rise up gradually each time it gets that little bit better. Um, so, the baguette. The baguette, it got its name a baguette. Let me just put my hands again. Um, in 1920, although as far back as the 18th century, there was these long sticks of bread, if you like. Um, baguette means wand or baton or stick. Hence, uh, a baguette magique was the magician's wand. The uh, baguettes ch chinoise chopsticks okay and the conductor's baton that he uses when he's con uh, conducting music is the uh, baguette de direction i think i pronounced that right i'm not sure so that's now going to have its final fourth 45 minute rest and at which point we are then going to start shaping the baguettes now I told you a baguette is like French, part of the French culture. Um, they made long wide loaves right back until the uh, time of Louis XIV. Um, became longer and thinner, sort of the mid 18th century. Now, where they actually originated from is all a bit speculative. There is some thought to do because when we come to cook it, we will be generating steam within the oven. And so there's some thought that when the first steam ovens were introduced in Paris in the early 19th century uh, by a person called Auguste Zhang, or Ch it might be Chang, I don't know. Um, he, he had already supposedly invented the croissant and the Vienna bread. And so because it's that similar crusty outside, if you like, uh, speculation is that he then invented the baguette. OK, but anyway, I'm going to let this rest for 45 minutes and then I'll tell you about some of the myths about where the baguette came from. Now, you don't need your oven on yet because even at the end of this 45 minute, we'll be shaping and they'll need another little rest like you would do normally with any other loaf. You can see the dough's risen again. It's quite nice and smooth, which is what we're looking for. So I'm just putting that to one side because what we now need is just a flour surface. And we're going to turn that dough out onto that floured surface. 
and we're going to do our pre-shaping. Now, the cling film that was over the top there, I've kept that and I've lightly oiled it. And I've got a tea towel here, which I'll explain why uh, in a bit. But first off, what we're going to do is we just want to um, lightly flour that and cut it. Now, I said to you, this is for making two, okay? So we want to cut it into two equal sized pieces, best we can. And then what we're just going to do is we're just going to shape them. Oops, that one's still attached. By sort of rolling them into like a nice bun, really. And then I'm just going to set that over there. A little bit too much flour on that one, I think. Um, and then we're just going to set it to one side and we're again going to let it rest for 15 minutes. I've got my timer ready. Uh, but while it's resting, we just take that lightly oiled cling film and just lay it over the top. And like I say, we're now just going to let that rest for 15 minutes. Now at the end of that, we're actually going to shape the baguette and we're going to need that cloth. Okay. So, while um, I'm just waiting on that, we're going to need a little bit more flour, um, and I need to clean my hands up, but I'll tell you about some of the myths. Now, one of them, the myth was that Bonaparte, Napoleon Bonaparte, said it was very awkward for his soldiers carrying all their gear, you know, when they're out on manoeuvres or whatever, uh, to also carry their loaves of bread, because the French like their bread. So he said, what we need is something long and thin, and he gave specific instructions to the size of it. He said, because they can tuck that inside their uniform and they haven't got to worry about how they're going to carry this big round loaf. So that was that was one myth. Okay. Um, a second was that the metro workers in Paris uh, used to carry knives with them. Uh, now, they used to get a bit handy with them knives because they used to fight a lot. Um, and the argument was, I need my knife to slice my bread, to cut me chunks of bread off. So again, someone said, what we need is a loaf that we don't need a knife for, that we can literally just tear the chunks off and then you don't need a knife, do you? So that was another myth. Uh, there's another one that post-revolution, they said, we need a bread of equality that's accessible by the poor and the rich. So everybody's equal when it comes to the bread. Um, another one, which is possibly more accurate, was that in about 1920 they passed a law that said no bakers um, and in fact actually it might not just be bakers it might have been other workers as well but it certainly applied to bakers were allowed to work between the hours of 10 p.m and 4 a.m and this meant the bakers did not have enough time to make their traditional round loaves you know with all the resting and everything else and then bake them in time for everybody to get for their breakfast so they developed the baguette, which obviously was a lot quicker. Now you wouldn't think that from the amount of time, which you won't appreciate from this video, but when you look at the timings, it does take a really long time. So there's your myths. We're just going to wait on that. Just have a little bit of tidy up. So um, and then I can tell you about the cloth. And you still don't need your oven on yet. Still got a few minutes to go yet on that, but here I've got my tea towel. Now what we've got or what we're going to use is what they call a baker's couche. Now this is like a cotton or canvasy uh, cloth that we will partly wrap the formed baguettes into. Um, but we don't want it sticking so it's important that it's very well floured. Now my work surface as I said before isn't um, greatest in terms of size so I'm struggling a little bit to get that on there okay and I'm just going to turn up an edge so we'll lay our baguette along there you'll see how it is when we form it now when we form the baguette which is what we're going to do now so we've done a little bit of a pre-form but we're going to then form the actual more traditional shape and they're going to go into the couche be covered over and they're going to rest for another 20 minutes 
Um, but in fact, they're going to rest for about 30 minutes, but we're going to do 20 minutes in the couche, then put the oven on, and then we'll have another 10 minutes in the couche while we wait for the oven to get the temperature. Now you want your oven set to 220C. Okay, so, a um, couple of minutes yet left, left yet, you can see these have started to rise again. This multiple fermentations that's been going on is partly what leads to that flavour of the bread. So where we more traditionally just do it the once as it were and then let it rise once we've shaped it, this increases the flavour. I take one of my pieces of dough and what I'm going to do is I'm sort of going to flatten it. You can see bubbles in it, okay, from all that extra fermentation and then what I'm going to do is roll it. I need some more flour. And so you've now sort of rolled it. You just flatten that down, make sure them folds. And we rolled it. Just try and make it fairly even. And at this, whoops. And that's not really sealed there and at this point we pick it up and we lay it on our couche and then fold up an edge so it's each one is trapped in its own little pocket so we're just flattening it rolling it And then just trying to seal them edges, get it fairly even. On it goes, up that goes, and then we're going to take another tea cloth, put the mug there, and we're just going to cover that over. And like I say, we're now, you know what I'm going to do, just fly out the top. we're now just going to let that rest for 20 minutes now like I said at the end of that 20 minutes what we'll do is we'll put an oven on and I've got a, a tray here with some boiling water which will go on the bottom shelf and that will help create some steam you'll also want some way of spraying some water that could be fun because I've got one um, because we're going to sprinkle some water on top of the baguettes when we put them well when we score them and then put them in the oven we just remove our tea towel, let that go in the wash, and our baguettes are now ready to transfer to a lightly greased or lightly oiled uh, baking tray. Now, I haven't quite got uh, something flat enough to enable me to transfer these very easily. I'm just rolling that onto there and then just roll that onto the baking tray. You can see it's a little bit of a squash to get it on there. It would have been better if I had a bigger flatter tray but then it would have fit in the oven wouldn't it? Um, so we just transfer these onto that oiled baking tray. And then what we want to do and this is where I said to you I don't have Flour um, I don't have a spray bottle, well I do, but the wife put bloody weed stuff in it or something. Um, so what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to use a pastry brush, I'm just going to try it and lightly, probably using too much water here, and then what we're going to do is give it a, a scoring. Now the scoring's a little bit tricky because we don't want to go all the way through okay and the whole idea of the scoring is so that the loaf doesn't sort of split as it as it goes so what we're going to do is make about four or in this case probably three because they're quite short 
long diagonal cuts. Now we don't want to go right over from edge to edge. We're sort of going across the top. And we want to be overlapping our cuts. And this way we should find that it doesn't sort of deform it too much. So the quite a, a long elongated slash starting about halfway down the previous one. That's a bit fat on my end. Um, and now um, they're ready to go in the oven. So the oven is just over 200. I've got that tray in there. I'm going to put that in there. I'm just going to spray them with a little bit more water and then we're going to bake them for about eight minutes. Then I'm going to rotate them around in the oven and give them about another eight minutes. And remember we want a, a nice sort of goldeny colour and hopefully if we've done the water right that nice crunchy texture. So if that's a total of 16 minutes um, not quite the right sort of texture if you like on top but it's very light it's very hollow still very very hot so in a little bit we'll try breaking a little bit off and see what it tastes like I mean it's cooled enough that I can actually taste it so I know the baguette is a bit more for tearing but let's just slice off the end bit there okay still very hot actually inside um I wouldn't say it's quite perhaps the standard texture it's not quite as bubbly if you like It has got, even though it doesn't really look like it, that familiar crunchy exterior. Despite not looking it, the inside is quite light and airy. Hmm, it's got a bit of French cheese actually. I might be enjoying this later with a French dish I should be making but equally I think we've got enough there to have with a little bit of cheese so there you go your traditional French baguette <laughs>